The first part of the Book of Enoch describes the fall of the Watchers, the angels who fathered the Nephilim. The remainder of the book describes Enoch's visits to heaven in the form of travels, visions, and dreams, and also his revelations. The Ethiopian Bible is the oldest and most complete Bible in existence. It's comprised of 88 books, far surpassing the King James Version, which has only 66. The missing texts are not included in the conventional version of the Bible due to their challenging nature, although their authors have been attested and their work revered by early Christians. Before being translated into Greek and Aramaic, the Ethiopian Bible was written in the extinct Ethiopian dialect known as Giz, attesting it as the oldest holy scripture in the world, 800 years earlier before the King James Version had surfaced. Enoch was the great-grandfather of Noah, the seventh generation of humans after Adam. Because of his rightfulness, he was chosen by God to do his bidding and deliver his words particularly after the earth became corrupt due to the irresponsible deeds of a superior order of angels with striking human appearance, also referred to as the Watchers. Enoch was the messenger of God and the one to receive his knowledgeable words and spread them across the land. In the end, he was taken by God into his kingdom, thus escaping his earthly demise that would sooner or later be upon him. Enoch walked faithfully with God, then he was no more, because God took him away. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not have to experience death. He cannot be found, because God had taken him away, for before he was taken, he was commended as the one who pleased God. It's no wonder why the Book of Enoch had not been included into the modern biblical version since its content speaks of wicked angels who became fond of mortal women and had mated with them, giving birth to the hybrid race of giant humanoids known throughout the secular and biblical history as the Nephilim. And it came to pass, when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. And their leader said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations, not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear, they all together, and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And so, the angels plunged from the heavens to take wives of their own choosing, defying the Creator's judgment. They numbered two hundred and were led by their leaders. These are their chiefs of tens. When the angels descended upon the earth, they started offering gifts of knowledge to both mortal men and women, thus defying the will of the Creator of an unaltered race of humans with a will of their own. In exchange, the angels demanded respect and adoration, but unaware, they were of the chaos they had instituted. They teach men how to make swords, knives, shields, breastplates, and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them. They teach women how to beautify their eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. And there arose much godlessness, and they committed fornication, and they were led astray, 
and became corrupt in all their ways. They taught enchantments and root cuttings, astrology, constellations, the knowledge of the clouds, the signs of the earth, the signs of the sun, and the course of the moon. And as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to heaven. All living creatures became impended, in one way or the other, by the new order of things. The angels didn't realize that the humans were too unripe and gullible to be taught so much knowledge at once. As a consequence, the earth became reddened from the blood of her creatures, and all living beings then became prone to the divine cleansing. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them, and to defile themselves with them. And they became pregnant, and they bare great giants, whose height was three thousand ells, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them, and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds, and beasts, and reptiles, and fish and to devour one another's flesh, and drink the blood. And the earth laid accusation against lawless ones. The conception of the Nephilim was the first ordeal humans had to face, as there was no way to overcome the needs of those supersized humanoids. Intervening in the natural order of things had infuriated the Creator, so the Watchers, and all that had been corrupted, were about to taste retribution and destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers, because they have wronged mankind. Destroy all wrong from the face of the earth, and let every evil work come to an end, and let the plant of righteousness and truth appear, and it shall prove a blessing. The work of righteousness and truth shall be planted in truth and joy forevermore. And cleanse thou the earth from all oppression, and from all unrighteousness, and from all sin, and from all godlessness, and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth, destroy from off the earth, and all the children of men shall become righteous, and all the nations shall offer adoration, and shall praise me, and all shall worship me, and the earth shall be cleansed from all defilement, and from all sin, and from all punishment, and from all torment. And I will never again send them upon it from generation to generation and forever. Needless to say that the global demise took form of a great flood and Noah was informed of this through the ascribed words of his forefather Enoch and was allowed to perpetuate the human species as well as preserve countless other wildlife. Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One spoke and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech and said to him, Go to Noah, and tell him in my name, Hide thyself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed, and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on it. And now instruct him that he may escape, and his seed may be preserved for all the generations of the world. Although some may find it hard to believe, the great flood had been scheduled long before Noah came to be, and it was his great-grandfather that had spread the divine word. The cataclysm was inevitable, as prior to that moment in time, inhabitants of the earth became corrupted and could no longer live in peace. The Book of Enoch tells many controversial stories of a time similar to what we experience today, but with some major differences. Before the Great Deluge, humans had tremendous lifespans, fact attested by the Sumerian King List and the Egyptian Pharaoh's timeline. Although historians still consider this time frame in human history as unproved and fictional, there are numerous accounts speaking of those days when gods walked among men, when mythological creatures were not just a figment of imagination, and a hundred years of life marked only the beginning of one's journey. Today it seems that our remote history is either not allowed to surface because it would turn the instituted order to bits, or because that cycle of human history was never meant to be known. How much this seclusion is benefiting mankind, we can only speculate. But I believe that such insight would offer us relief, and that's exactly what we need to become, at peace with ourselves and the universe of which we are all part of.